Metaphysical Energy Healing, Chapter 1, Section 7, Meeting the Doctor Inside. While we were doing the exercise, I recognized a palpable change in the atmosphere of the room we were working in. At the time, I could not quite understand what I was detecting, but later I will share with you my feelings regarding what type of environmental results occur when people are performing this type of effort. For now, I can tell you that there is nothing quite like being in a room full of people who are learning this exercise. After we learned and practiced this technique for perhaps 15 or more minutes following our initial instructions, Rosalind was satisfied that we had all learned the technique and we were ready for another experience. The idea was for us to be able to detect the subtle energy that was being emitted by another human being. Recall that we were experimental subjects and that we were soon to be tested for our ability to detect energy emitted from the palms of another person. While I do believe the instruction provided by Rosalind for us that day was designed to test Dr. Schwartz's hypothesis, I should also let you know that this is the basic technique that she taught to me once again later. I was in a state of near ecstasy when we finally paired off to complete our training in emitting and detecting chi. I felt so enormously happy, perhaps as happy as I had ever been. We went to separate areas in the resort of Rex Ranch, which we got to choose. My partner and I chose a sunny location overlooking the central plaza of the resort. We were both laughing and very pleased. It did not take us long to determine that we could easily detect the energy coming out of the palms of the other person. We would guess which hand the energy was being emitted from and determine whether we were correct in our analysis. This took only a few minutes and then we compared notes. Her description of the feeling that she had in her body upon increasing the flow of chi was nearly identical to mine. She also had almost an identical impression of the chi initially being felt best at the knees and in the hands before the sensation developed in the abdomen. For her, visualizing her pet, which was a source of unconditional love, powerfully activated her heart chakra, pump that is the second dantian, and like me, she immediately felt the energy pass down her arms into her palms. Also like me, she found that at a certain point, further extension of her feet, in reality her human energy field, into the earth resulted in a noticeable increase in the amount of flow. This was further increased, and both of us experienced this when we activated our heart chakra. While you can move chi with conscious intent using your mind, you can also move chi with love. I would later find out that love expands the human energy field, sinking it deeper into the earth. The same is true of beauty. The same is true of, of truth. The same is true of silence. We had a considerable amount of time left before we were to rejoin the group for further discussion. Being ever the scientist, I wanted to investigate further. Once again, I was lucky that I did so. I had her stand as I placed my hand on the top of her head, knowing that there was a major intake and processing chakra at that point. Being new to running energy can be both a blessing and a curse. I decided to run the energy as powerfully as possible, sinking my feet as deeply as possible into the earth and pulling as much energy as humanly possible. Something very interesting happened, and it happened very quickly. Suddenly, without any direction from myself, I felt the energy enter my body like a river. It gathered very quickly in my abdomen and suddenly shot out my arms, one of which was on the top of their head and the other on her elbow. I was unaware of it, but she immediately became very dizzy while I entered a state that was identical to the one that I had when Rosalind had stopped me from thinking. However, at this time, it was so overwhelming that for several seconds, I did not know where I was. I also spent a considerably longer time in that state than I had before. For the few seconds that I remained there, I was able to note that although my eyes were closed, that I could see the surrounding environment in great detail. It was a little bit bizarre. I could actually see in a 360 view while my eyes were completely closed. I wondered immediately what I was seeing with. A total view of the environment around me in all directions occurred. It was also incredibly vivid. The details of the environment were impressively enhanced. In addition, something else happened that took me years to understand. I felt a subtle wave of energy pass through my body, and it felt as though I was in an enormous bubble of energy. I was pulled back into my ordinary reality when I heard my partner saying that she needed to sit down. Luckily, we had brought chairs, and I helped her to her seat. I asked her to perform the technique with me. When she did so, the same experience was repeated. I entered the state quite easily, feeling my entire body become warm and tingly. I once again felt that I was in an enormous bubble of energy. However, I did not become dizzy, 
Something inside me opened up that day. From that moment on, I was changed as a person. I knew I had found something amazing, but had no idea what it was. It didn't take very long for both of us to regain our equilibrium. We re-entered our ordinary state of consciousness quite quickly. It was on that day that I realized, quite by accident, how easy it was to run large amounts of subtle energy given the right circumstance. I will later explain that the right circumstance was that I had no expectation at all that I could do so. I also learned, although I did not have a good grasp of the idea at the time, that manipulation of human life force chi can immediately result in entry into altered states of consciousness. I could only briefly try to understand what the wave of energy represented and what the bubble was. We were not given much time to discuss what had happened, which is unfortunate, for I believe that if we had, I would have learned what it took me years to learn in a matter of minutes. Someone immediately showed up and told us that the group was reconvening for further discussion. Rosalind fielded questions about our experiences, but I never had the chance to tell her the fantastic nature of what my partner and I had done. I will explain how many energy medicine practitioners that I have met enter into altered states of consciousness when they work with their healing practice. I will also have the opportunity to explain to you what happens when the physical human body and the human energy field enters into this state. Even the most skeptical among you will hopefully understand this explanation of how conscious energy manipulation can induce healing. Rosalind also taught us how to differentially admit energy out of our hands preferentially right and left. It was here that she briefly explained the wishy-washy technique. I had already done it when I was passing energy back and forth between my hands. I used this when I returned home at my clinic. This appears to be the major instruction related to the energy experiment of Dr. Schwartz. Our ability to learn this would be the primary skill that Dr. Schwartz was testing. I would like to note at this time that I was able to review the published results of this experiment, and the results were positive. Unfortunately, I have no idea what all the other participants in this experiment felt in terms of their experiences. Our experience at Rex Rand ended all too soon. I never saw many of the people ever again. Others amongst us continued to train with Rosalind for years. Many of the participants left that very night to Tucson to return in anticipation of further testing at the university that following day. I stayed overnight at Rex Ranch, intentionally wanting another sample of the desert stars. Rosalind was on her way back to California. I joined another internist, Miguel, to have a couple of beers on the patio of Rex Ranch. We talked about the experience. I tried to explain what had happened and what I felt. We talked of many things, sipping our brews under the dark sky, listening to the splash and gurgle of a fountain. It is hard for me to express what my thoughts and feelings were that night. I can tell you that something of my altered state of consciousness lingered well into that night and into the next morning. The world seemed different, more vivid and alive, as if everything around me was aware of me as I was it. Even the stars seemed to smile down upon me. At one point, Miguel asked me who I was. My answer was lame as I simply described what others knew of me, what I did, and what they thought. He kindly rejected my answer. That night it became clear that I did not know who I was. Miguel had shown me that I did not know who I was. Rosalind had shown me that I did not know what I was. Do you know what you are? You are a conscious being made of light. Light is energy. You are a conscious being made of conscious energy. This conscious energy can be manipulated by our simple intent. This much I know. This is what I would now tell Miguel.